If you're a book lover, Grand Park's annual book fest is the place to be. No precisamente tiene que ser fanático de Hello Kitty para venir a conocer el famoso pop-up cafe. Cientos de personas vienen al día cuando está abierto. It was a sea of kites on this sunny day where people of all ages came to fly their kites. This month's art walk is to recognize women power through art. Whether you consider hiking a workout or not, you can still come enjoy these trails and get a view of the Hollywood sign. From highlight to contour, these girls are asking for makeup instead of dolls. Some see this as adorable, others are against the idea. In the end, these taller say they will continue to practice their glam skills. In Beverly Hills, I'm Flora Tolentino. The dream of owning a home has become increasingly out of reach for most millennials. But even renting is getting harder and harder to do. Author and poet Emily Dickinson was the center of attention at this year's LA Book Fest. Both children and adults who love books attended and were able to enjoy all types of activities inspired by Dickinson's work, like bookmaking, portrait painting, and herbarium creations. Artist Rachel Curry volunteered this year to help children create herbariums, just like the one Emily Dickinson created as a young girl. Uh, we're making little mini herbariums, which is like a, a handmade book with a collection of plant specimens. There were also live poem recitals throughout the day by people who were inspired by Emily Dickinson's poetry. To deteriorate like the corpses in the ground, worms crawling through my eyes and dirt and decay ravage my bones. No longer able to fear what I once had. Maybe I'll finally be able to have some peace and comfort. This is what he whispers to me. While some simply lounge around the park or freshen up by the fountain, others spent their time reworking poems using typewriters. By signing up with your email, you were given a free book of Dickinson's poems. You then choose a poem and added your style to it and begin typing. Book lover and attendee Stephanie Gonzalez describes her experience. I love it. I'm a fan of reading. I'm a fan of writing. I write when I'm feeling down, I write when I'm feeling happy. Once you were finished creating your own poem, you hand it over to one of the volunteers. If you're a book lover, Grand Park's annual book fest is the place to be. This year, they chose to honor poet Emily Dickinson. In Los Angeles, Valley View News, Flor Tolentino. Hundreds of kite makers showcase their work in a so-called gallery in the sky from all the kites that will be in the air. The sky was filled with kites of all shapes and sizes. The director of the event, Richard Shelton, describes what the Kite Festival is all about. And the Kite Festival is sort of Otis's way to give back to the community. So we have, you know, we, we fly in kite artists from all over the, all over the country uh, to fly their big kites. People can stroll around the Santa Monica Pier and view the kites. Kite artist Ron Gibeon there's a huge variety. I mean, I've gone the gamut, you know, of kite making, you know, whether it's flat and bowed kites, three-dimensional pieces. Winchie Lee traveled a long way to see the kites. I'm from northeastern part of China. We also have kite festival because it's just uh, people like the sports uh, with the kites. But I like the design. It's very unique here. All attendees were welcome to join the fun and create their own kite using a kite kit supplied by Otis College. Otis College was able to provide materials for participants to create up to 3,000 kites. It was a sea of kites on this sunny day where people of all ages came to fly their kites. In Santa Monica, Flora Tolentino, Valley View News. This exhibition focuses on the stories of women and celebrates the work and craft of female artist Katie Rees, Isabella Innes and Eza B, along with the art performances by Chloe Nilai in honor of Women's History Month. Chicana American artist Katie Rees is mainly known for her blanket series. Her work portrays couples standing or lying under colorful Mexican blankets. She is known for geometric patterns and bright colors shown throughout her work. She says this exhibit is all about empowering women. I know mostly women hung the art, they curated the shows, they picked the artists, and it's beautiful. Women, power, and art relate because you have to be a powerful woman in order to make art. This is the work of American-born artist Isabella Innes. She is famous for her landscapes and portraits like this one of civil rights activist Rosa Parks and feminist Frida Kahlo. The colorful work of Filipino painter and illustrator Ezebi is primarily on family, Filipino culture, and self-empowerment. 
Our walk official, Laura Dildy, says the exhibit was designed for several reasons. Really put together a show that represents not only local artists, but local female artists. Um, and tying in with Women's History Month, and I think it's a really like poignant show that um, kind of captures a lot of different cultures, a lot of different backgrounds, and a lot of different styles. Chinese American artist Ni Lai pays amends to females' work. As a feminist, Ni Lai pays tribute to the idea that the human body is the carrier of the immortal culture. Her performance demonstrated how she used the ancient art of Chinese calligraphy painted directly onto a woman's body, representing the wounds, resilience, and pride of women. This month's art walk is to recognize women power through art. In Los Angeles, Valley View News, Flor Tolentino. Los Angeles is known for its glitz and glam, but what many don't know is that it's home to amazing hiking trails, such as Griffith Park, Runyon Canyon, and the famous Hollywood Sign Trail. The West Griffith Park Observatory Trail takes you all the way up to the observatory. It's one of the easiest trails at Griffith Park designed for families and children. It's two miles long, you climb more than 500 feet in elevation gain, and if you're lucky, you might spot some deer along the way. My friend and I come here almost every week. Um, it's just a great place to kind of release your stress and stuff, but uh, you don't also have to go far out. And it's a short hike. Dino Costas came all the way from Chicago to visit Griffith Park and says it's an easy trail to traverse. I like the views. I think the vistas are really pretty. Uh, after the rain, I think it's gorgeous that it's so green. Recently, Runyon Canyon reopened, and no matter what the weather is like, people come out to enjoy the views and walk along these trails. You can take your dog along a new paved trail that's about two miles long. Along the right side of Runyon Canyon, there's another trail that isn't paved. It's a little over a mile long. You can get views of downtown LA and the Hollywood Hills. Jasmine Karulis traveled from Melbourne to see the scenery at Runyon Canyon. This has been really cool. But I think the trail itself is actually really nice to walk on as well. It's not too hard. Um, I was expecting it, expecting it to be a lot more difficult, so that's good. <laughs> the Hollywood Sign Trail is the most historic trail. It offers hikers an amazingly close encounter to the 45-foot-tall letters. There are three routes. The Mount Hollywood Trail for beginning hikers is about three miles long and is mostly flat. The Canyon Drive Trail for the moderate hiker is six and a half miles long and steady uphill. And lastly, the Cahuenga Peak Trail is for the expert hiker, and this trail is more rugged and less defined than the others. Hikers climb over 800 feet in elevation, and it's three miles long. Once you reach the top, you are just above and behind the letters, and can even see the Pacific Ocean on a clear day. Canadian tourist Carly Claire Singer says this trail has a lot to offer. Because the Hollywood sign is very iconic and everyone talks about it, so the fact that you can get this close to see it, well, this beautiful setting, then it's pretty exciting. Whether you consider hiking a workout or not, you can still come enjoy these trails and get a view of the Hollywood sign. Reporting for Valley View News in Los Angeles, I'm Flor Tolentino. Their success has led to international recognition and the reimagining of an area formerly unrecognized in the art world. These muralists are helping transform walls into art and transforming a community in the process. Award season is about to come to a close with the biggest night in Hollywood. With 14 Oscar nominations, La La Land is expected to be the movie to beat the 89th Academy Awards. Late Night's Jimmy Kimmel will be hosting for the first time. Films like Moonlight have received top honors at other award shows, making it a top contender. The last two years, the Oscars have been accused of little or no diversity in nominations. However, this year's films such as Hidden Figures, Fences, and Lion, all with diverse casts, are nominated. Donald Glover has been cast as Simba in the Lion King live-action film. The release date for the film is yet to be announced.